georeferencing with GCPs. In your data package, we have another file, 1870 southern india.jpg. This is from an archive, this is a scanned map of India, 1870s. So very old map of India, not georeference, just a photo, somebody scanned this. I want to now georeference it. Again, I do not know the corner coordinate because you can see the corner coordinate somewhere out of the image and this is not known. So I need to go through the georeferencing process and say, oh, this point is this coordinate, this point is this coordinate, and I can do georeferencing. You need at least three or four points on the map for it to be able to assign and georeference this. Yeah. So the typical process that you will follow is you will use software like QGIS to do the georeferencing. I'll show you the process in my QGIS website. What is the georeferencing process? So again, you would have to do this one time, right? You have to figure out what are those type point coordinates for your map before you can use GDAL. GDAL won't magically figure this out. So you would use QGIS or something. Say I'll use a georeferencer. I will use the type points and say, oh, I have this grid is, the intersection of the grids are a specific coordinates. So I'll drop those points there. And once I drop those points, you can see I drop the points and say, this is the coordinates in the georeferenced space. So this is the latitude, this is longitude. And I'll do this for a few points here on my map. Okay, so these are the type points that I've figured out. In QGIS, you can now say, apply the georeferencing and it just applies it. So if it's a one-time process, use this process and apply this. What I want to show you is it uses GDAL under the hood. Can we use GDAL completely from this process once we have those type points? This will be useful where you say, I have the same type of map. I want to georeference it using the same type points. Or I want more control over applying the right compression, applying the right transformation. So I will just use QGIS to get my type points. Once I have the type points, source destination. I have this table, I can use Q, uh, GDAL to apply those transformations. So let's do this 1.6.2. You can see I have those five points, which I have figured out, which are the type points between the pixel and line. So this is the point on the JPEG image. This corresponds to the real world coordinates of X and Y. So we have those four. First step is we need to embed this GCPs into our image. GDAL Translate has this flag called GCP where you can say GCP, pixel, line, X, Y. So this says this is one pair of type points. That means this pixel and this line corresponds to this coordinates. And I can just run this and add those four GCPs to my image. So let's try run this first command. This says take my 1870 Southern India JPEGs, turn this into a TIFF by inputting this coordinates in the metadata. This is not doing the transformation yet. It is just saving those coordinates in the header. Okay, let's run this and see what happens. Let's do GDAL info and check this India with GCP .tif. You can see this file, there's no georeferencing, but you can see the header says, I have this five GCPs, which are saved here. So this is now part of the file. It's in the file header. These are GCPs. There's still no projection here, but my GCPs are saved. So this is useful that my file has the GCPs for turning this into a georeference file. Okay, so the first step is figure out the, the type points. Next step, save those into the image. And finally, we can apply a transformation. So next, we can use GDAL warp and say, I have those GCPs, apply the transformation to whatever projection you want to do, at whatever resolution you want to do, whatever algorithm you want to do. When you're transforming this, you can use different algorithms for assigning coordinates to each pixel. You only know the coordinates of five pixels in the image. You want to assign and interpolate the coordinates of every other image. You can use polynomial algorithms or you can use thin plate spline. Let's use the first ordered polynomial and assign this. So let's run the next command, which says GDAL warp, assign it this particular projection. This is an old India datum that was used hundreds of years back. So most likely this particular map was in that particular datum. So we assigned that CRS, first order transformation, we want to assign a resolution in degrees and we do our transformation and we assign the compression parameters. Let's run this. At this point, it is taking those GCPs, transforming all pixels 
And now we finally have the georeferenced file that is available to us. Let's do GDAL info on the final IndiaRE projected. And now GDAL info says we have this file in this coordinate system. We have the resolution and we have the coordinate coordinates. So now we got a georeferenced file. So we went from a JPEG, saving the GCPs in the header to a final output in the desired projection in resolution. Run this and when we open this in QGS, you will see that when you open this, this will sit exactly where it belongs. You can see it's set on South India. The advantage of doing this is once we have saved the GCPs, we can decide and do experimentation on what algorithm works best, what resolution works best, and do this on the command line versus having to do this in a desktop GIS. If we had multiple files, we can apply the same transformation using a batch process. So try this out. Let's run those two steps. You first run this step where you save the GCPs onto take the JPEG, save the GCPs, create the stiff file, and then use GDAL warp to do the first order transformation. 